Hey folks, a little while ago we checked out this two-person 72-hour waterproof survival kit made by Life Gear. On the Life Gear website, they sell it for right at $75, but I got this at Walmart and I believe I paid between $50 and $60 for it if I'm remembering correctly. Well, there's another two-person 72-hour survival kit that Life Gear makes and here it is. So this one looks a little different and it also costs more, cost right at $100. So we're gonna check it out right now on Kitbashed Survival. All right, so let's get the tag off. And here's the little brochure that comes with it. Well, a little card. So they've got the contents listed here in both English and French, which to me, means that they're intending on selling this in both the US and Canada. And you can pause and read those contents if you want to. Anyway, let's go ahead and check out the bag itself. Just like the last two-person three-day survival kit from Life Gear that I reviewed, the bag is very well made. It seems very thick, nice and rubbery, like it would be very waterproof, which is what it says. This one sells for about $100, which is about $25 over what the other kit retails for. And they're both two-person, three-day survival kits, and I think the contents are very much the same. So I was wondering why this kit would cost $25 more than the other one. And externally, there are a couple differences. So you've got, let's take that off. You've got this handle here, which the other kit did not have. So. That makes it kind of easy to pick up, although I think this has another use, which I'll discuss later. But then you've also got this valve down here, and I think this valve might be another reason why this kit costs a little more than the other one. We'll talk more about this valve and this handle later on. Otherwise, it's pretty much the same. You've got these two loops back here for a shoulder strap that should be in the bag once we get in there. And then you've got some loops up here as well. And again, very nicely made. I really like the construction of the bag. It's a nice feeling of quality, like you're not getting something cheap. All right, so let's go ahead and open this up and see what we've got inside. It's got a nice roll top to keep it watertight. And then you've got that latch there. All right, so first up, we've got some emergency rations. SOS Food Labs emergency rations. There's 410 calories per serving and there are six servings per pack. So that's about 2,400 calories per serving. And there's two of them. So about 2,400 calories per person for three days or about 800 calories per person per day, which is not a lot, but I've said this before, food is the least important item in a survival situation. Your body can go days or even weeks without food. And so 800 calories a day, it's not a lot. You're not gonna thrive on 800 calories a day, but you will survive. Then we've got some water. So we've got two packs of water and each pack has six bags. And each bag is, I think it's four ounces about. 4.227 ounces. So roughly 24, 25 ounces of water per person. Now, of course, 25 ounces of water per person for three days is not enough to survive on, but this is enough to get you started until you can secure a better source of water. That's what this is all about, getting you started. And sort of the food too, you know, you would hope you could find other sources of food before you ran out of the ration bars. All right, we've got some gear here. Looks like duct tape and few other things. We'll check that out in just a minute. And we've got some shelter elements, ponchos, and a tent. And the last one, I think this is where they had the water purification tablets too, but we'll find out. Hopefully the water purification tablets in here are better than the ones in the last one of these kits that I reviewed, because those were pretty horrid. They were in pretty bad condition and the packaging wasn't very good. All right, then we've got some flashlights and a crank light. Check that out in a minute. Got a first aid bag. Here's the strap that goes on the bag, shoulder strap. 
And then lastly, we've got a ferro rod and striker and looks like some burn relief gel. And that's it. And just in case you're wondering what it looks like down in the bag, there it is. I think there might be a... Yeah. There's a little cardboard thing on the bottom just to help it keep its shape, keep its rigidity. I'll put that back in there. You could use this, you know, to start a fire or something like that, though. So we'll check out the shelter bag. On the front it says there's two emergency ponchos, two emergency blankets, and one emergency tent. So there are the emergency ponchos. Pretty basic. And then we've got two emergency blankets, the Mylar space blankets. And then here we have the emergency tent. And I really like the fact that this kit has an emergency tent. It makes a big difference. You should be able to fit two people in this Mylar tube tent. It's not going to be super fun, but it will give you some basic shelter. Next, we've got this fire starting bag that has the ferro rod and striker. And I think it's kind of funny that they also put some burn relief gel in here as well. And there you go. It's a very basic ferro rod and striker. Pretty small, pretty thin, but it'll get the job done. And it works just fine. And here's that burn gel. And again, I think it's kind of fitting that they put the burn gel with the fire making equipment. Kind of clever. Oh, and by the way, just in case you're wondering if this gel is actually meant to be used as fuel, it's not. I thought maybe if it contained alcohol or something, but it doesn't. It is just for burns. All right, next we've got this gear bag and it says it's got 30 feet of paracord, a five in one tool and whistle, multi-blade tool knife, compact towel, two of them, a mini roll of duct tape, and 20 water purification tablets. So there's the duct tape. Pretty big roll of it. Then we've got two of these little pack towels. These are the kind you put a little water on and they get much larger. Then we've got one of these things. We'll come back to that. There's 30 feet of paracord. Not bad. Water purification tablets. We'll come back to those in a second. And then we've got our little quote multi-tool. And you've seen these before. I've seen these in about a million kits. It's that little stainless steel multi-tool thing. Which I guess is better than nothing, but... Not much better. So it's got a can opener, a knife edge, a screwdriver, a ruler, a cap opener, a four position wrench, a butterfly wrench, a saw blade, direction ancillary indication, a two position wrench, and a lanyard hole. So yeah, there it is in all its glory. All right, then we got this thing. Just like the multi-tool, I've seen about a million of these things in survival kits. And eh, it's okay. I mean, I wouldn't go so far as to say it's bad, but, you know, it's very basic. So, got some cordage there, a little lanyard. There's a compass up top, which does appear to work. Then inside, you've got a mirror and a little waterproof compartment that you can put matches in or what have you. Then there's a little ferro rod here to strike matches on, although we've already got a ferro rod in the kit. And then you've got a whistle. It's a ball whistle, and it actually sounds surprisingly good. And then we've got these water purification tablets. Now, the bags look better than in the last kit. At least they're not all nasty looking, so... I still would rather have some brand name water purification tablets, or at least a label on the outside of the packet. But let's see what these look like on the inside. Last time they were pretty ratty. So I'm hoping for something better this time. Oh yeah, these look much better than before. These actually look like regular water purification tablets. So I'm not sure what brand they are, 
but I would at least put a little more trust in these than the weird, partially degraded, unlabeled pills that were in the last two-person, three-day survival kit that I reviewed from Life Gear. So this is an improvement. And like I said, when I was reviewing that last two-person, three-day survival kit, it may have just been that that specific kit I got had a bad batch of pills, you know, but these look okay. Then we've got our lighting bag. It's got one crank flashlight and two LED glow stick flashlights. These look to be exactly the same as were in the previous two-person three-day kit. But we'll get it out anyway. So there's the crank flashlight. It's already got a charge. It's nice. Unlock it. There we go. And there's the crank. It's off pretty good light. I mean, it's not going to win any awards or anything, but it's okay. And then we've got these Life Gear LED glow stick lights. And there it is. So it's got five different light modes. You've got flashlight, flashlight and flashing red light, flashlight and solid red light, solid red light by itself, and then flashing red light by itself. And then there's also a whistle down here, which is okay. The other whistle was better, but it'll do in a pinch. So there it is. And now we've got the first aid bag, although we had a little bit of first aid equipment in that fire bag with the burn gel. But let's see what we've got here. We've got an instant ice pack squeezed together and it gets cold. Got a bottle of hand sanitizer. Now, unlike the burn gel, this could be used as a fuel if necessary. Got this bag. We'll take a look at that in a second. Got some first aid instructions. We've got some medical tape and this is that kind of medical tape that I like a lot. It's that stuff that's kind of translucent and has sort of a texture to it rather than that white stuff that you get in a lot of first aid kits. I like that. All right, then we've got a big ace bandage, 10 centimeters by 4.5 meters, not bad. We've got a pair of nitrile examination gloves. Always good to have. We've got two packs of gauze, or two rolls of gauze, I should say. And then we've got a pretty generous supply of toilet paper. And I really like this. The other Life Gear two-person three-day kit had one of these. This one has one too. You don't see a lot of survival kits out there that include toilet paper, let alone a generous supply. This is fantastic. So now let's check out what's in this bag. We've got a pair of tweezers, a pair of scissors, a whole bunch of safety pins. One, two, three, four, five, six safety pins. We've got two knuckle band-aids. We've got two butterfly closures. We've got a whole bunch of alcohol prep pads. Two, four, six, eight of them. Two gauze pads. These are five centimeters squared. Two alcohol-free cleansing wipes. Some more band-aids. So we've got five, ten regular sized band-aids. And then we've got a moleskin for blisters. Not bad. And lastly, let's come back to the bag. Now, as I said before, one of the things that sets this kit apart from the other two-person three-day survival kit that Life Gear makes and that I reviewed a few weeks ago is the presence of this handle and this valve. But on the Life Gear website and on the Walmart website where I bought this one and on the contents card, it makes absolutely no mention of the valve or the handle or what they're meant to be used for. Now, I guess I could try to contact the folks at Life Gear and ask them for an official answer, 
but after playing around with this for a little bit, I think I have it figured out. So when I first got the kit, I figured this was for water. I figured you'd fill up the bag with water, purify the water, and then have a little spout at the bottom for easy access to that water. But I don't think that's what it's meant to be used for. So there's two ways to open this valve down here. The larger knob opens the valve fully so that anything can get in or out of the bag. It's just a big opening. And I suppose this could be used for water, although I don't think that's what it's for because it would be kind of messy and uncontrolled. Now, there's another opening here, and this is an actual valve. It's got a little rubber gasket here, and this is a one-way valve. It will only allow stuff to go into the bag and not out of the bag. Now, I thought, okay, maybe you can hook a hose up to this, but that didn't work. I tried to force some water in, but it just made more of a mess than actually getting water into the bag. So I finally realized, I think this is meant for air. I think this is meant to allow you to inflate the bag so that you can use it as an emergency flotation device. So let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna put back in the big valve there. And now we've got this small one open and I've got the bag sealed up top. And now I'll inflate. <laughs> and there we go. And that's a one way valve. So the air is not coming back out. Go ahead and close it just to be safe. And with this handle, we now have a flotation device that we can grab onto and use in the water if necessary. And I think that's what this is all about. Now, again, I could be wrong. There is no official documentation on it, but that's my best guess. And, you know, if I'm wrong, I'm sure I'll get eaten alive in the comments. But as of now, that's my best guess. I think this is meant to be used as an emergency flotation device. Of course, you would have to empty all the contents of the bag to use it as a flotation device. But then again, if you're in a situation where you might be drowning, well, not drowning is going to be more important than any of the gear inside the bag at that moment because, of course, you can't use the gear if you're dead. Now, an alternative way you could use this valve would be with the gear inside the bag. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, if you had all the gear in the bag and then you inflated it, that would give the bag some buoyancy. And that way, if you've got this bag on a boat or something like that and it falls out of the boat or the boat sinks, the bag itself doesn't sink to the bottom of the lake or ocean like a stone. It's got a little bit of buoyancy and that will allow you to fetch it and then use it to survive. So I think it's one of those two options. Again, I'm not entirely sure, but that's my best guess. All right, so here's all the gear laid out from the Life Gear two-person, three-day waterproof survival bag, the slightly more expensive version that they make. And I think I like this version better than the less expensive rendition because number one, it's got a shelter element with the tube tent. Number two, it's got water purification tablets that look legitimate this time. And number three, you've got this cool valve thing going on to make an inflatable buoy. So overall, I like it better. And if I was choosing between the two, I would choose this one for sure, even though it's a little more expensive. Now, even though this kit is pretty good as is, there is some extra room in the bag. And so I will add some extra gear just to make it that much better. So on the medical side, I'm gonna add a tourniquet just in case. I'm also gonna add a couple packs of sunscreen, 50 SPF. I'm gonna add two of these hot hand super warmers just in case it gets cold. I'm gonna add four 12 by 12 sheets of tin foil. These could be used to cook food or boil water. On the food and beverage side, I'm gonna add one more pack of rations. These are the Daytrex rations. These are my favorite. That's another 2,400 calories or another 1,200 calories per person. So that'll bring each person up to 1,200 calories per day which is a little better than 800 calories. I'm gonna add two packs of instant coffee just because I like to have caffeine. And if I don't get caffeine, I'll have a whopper of a headache. And I'll add two small plastic folding cups. And these are those kind that fold out like that. And then you got a little cup. Now, because water is the most important item in a survival situation, I'm gonna beef that up considerably. So I'll add 10 additional water purification tablets. Those will purify one liter per tablet. I'm gonna add two one liter World Pack stand up water bags. I'll add two Melita coffee filters to help filter sediment from water. And then to top things off, I'll add two of these Hydro Blue Sidekick three stage straw water filters. Each filter will filter 100 gallons of water and it comes with an extra pre-filter just in case it gets clogged. 
On the fire and light side, I'm going to add a big butane lighter. I'll add three pieces of fat wood to help build a fire. I'll add a book of matches. I'll add two tea light candles. And then I'll add this Esbit emergency stove that includes the fuel tablets. I'm going to add a knife to this kit. This is a Wraith made by Ontario Knife Company. It's an inexpensive knife. I think these are about 20 bucks or so, but it'll do just fine. I'm going to add a couple face masks because that's always a good idea in this day and age. I'm going to add this mini med kit, which has a bunch of ibuprofens and some Benadryl. And I'll also add a few emodiums. I'm going to add four small zip ties. And then lastly, I'm going to add a clear trash bag. This could be used to gather water, could be used as a primitive shelter element, or it could be used to store all the gear if you had to remove it from the main bag for some reason. Oh, almost forgot. I'm going to add an emergency fishing kit made by Best Glide ASC. All right, so it's time to get busy and see if I can fit all this stuff back in that bag. Now there's a few more things I want to add that I almost forgot about. So here's a waterproof notebook with a pencil. Got six Jolly Rancher candies, some salt, and a wire saw. Alright, I got it all in there. So now I've got a pretty good kit going on here. I did notice one final thing about this kit. The less expensive version had a single strap on the outside. This actually has two. And so if you wanted, you could wear it like a little backpack, which probably wouldn't be a bad idea. So yeah, there it is. The Life Gear two-person three-day waterproof survival bag made even better with some extra gear. So let me know what you think in the comments below. For now, that's it. I'm Eric Siegel. This is Kitbash Survival. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.